2023 Range Rover P530 Autobiography LWB Luxury four-wheel drives aren't a new phenomenon by any means. In fact, Range Rover created the segment decades ago, and while the British mark had things its own way for quite a while, it wasn't long before other manufacturers caught on and decided that they wanted a piece of the pie. It seems inconceivable now, but back in the late 60s, the idea of both luxury and capability being present in the one vehicle was nothing more than an ideal. Now, every manufacturer wants to get in on the action. And, it's not just BMW, Mercedes-Benz or Audi either. Bentley, Aston Martin, Lamborghini, Rolls-Royce, Ferrari, Maserati, Porsche, the list grows all the time. Prototyped from 1967 and released as a two-door only in 1969, the Range Rover set the standard and created the expectation that you could go a long way off-road, but do it in style too. You could argue, then, that the current flagship Range Rover is the S-Class of the SUV segment, as much a luxury limousine as it is an off-road warrior. While you could argue that all of the manufacturers listed above have tried to capture the bespoke, high-quality, attention to detail that you experience when you sit inside the cabin of a Range Rover, few have managed to execute it, even at twice the price. The world of the ultra-luxury four-wheel drive is an interesting one, even more so if the 4x4 in question has a Land Rover slash Range Rover badge. On one hand, any Land Rover product must have a highly effective level of off-road ability. The brand demands it, not just the fans and buyers. However, no one will ever take a 4WD like this, especially north of 300 grand, anywhere near much more than a gravel national park trail. You would think, then, that the rangey might be hamstrung on road against more focused rivals. Don't be so sure, especially given Land Rover's ability to deliver dual-purpose on- and off-road 4WDs. Whether it's a Discovery or a Defender, a Range Rover Sport or the iconic autobiography we're testing here, Land Rover's ability to deliver dual-purpose for WDs is unparalleled. How much does the Range Rover cost in Australia? The short answer here might be to suggest that the Rang Rover we're testing costs a lot in Australia, and then move on. If you have to ask, you can't afford it, and all that. However, for those of you who can afford it, let's break it all down. The starting price for this model, the long wheelbase, 7-seat autobiography, is an eye-watering $312,193 before on-road costs. Refreshingly, our test example is quite lean on the options list. Yes, at this price you shouldn't need to stack a vehicle with too many options, but it's also commonplace to see upwards of 20 or 30 grand added to the price once the options list has been attacked. With the options listed below added, the starting price runs out to $318,603 before on-road costs. The standard equipment list is long, as you'd expect, and the only two options I take a swing at are the privacy glass and domestic plug socket. Surely if you're buying this kind of vehicle, you want privacy glass? And surely if you're spending this much money, a domestic plug socket could be included free of charge? The price for both is listed below. Competitors vary broadly in their focus and capability, and none are as capable off-road as a Range Rover. Towing is another area where the Range Rover excels. The most expensive Maserati Levant tips over the 300 grand mark. The most expensive Porsche Cayenne likewise. Aston Martin and Bentley both start beyond the $400,000 mark, as does the Lamborghini Urus and the still-to-arrive Ferrari Purosang. The Range Rover lineup itself starts from $232,265 before on-road costs for the P400 SASWB model if you want petrol. The entry-grade D300 SASWB starts from $226,806 if you're more inclined to buy a diesel. How much space does the Range Rover have inside? A Range Rover cabin is focused more on luxury than space, but as always, there's plenty of both inside the autobiography we're testing here. Working backward, the third row is useful for adults, so long as they aren't overly tall or you're taking a cross-country road trip. 
I'm not sold on the 7-seat layout in this segment, but it works in the way it's intended for occasional use.